I want to still do steroids. Okay. Yeah, same. So what no. what are we doing here? How do we Safe just do week. the safest amount of Safe steroids? Week. I don't understand why people won't or do that. everything else. Or we can jump peptides. out of a plane. Or peptide. peptide. Whatever they fucking are. I'm going to call legal. them all steroids. Talk about peptides. PED. I want to do PEDs. What's up, guys? Derek Moore, PlaySmartAids.com. Today, we're going to be reacting to the next... Andrew Schultz video that you guys have been uh, blowing me up about it is Schultz wants to do steroids blood safely Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh see the comment section as you would expect more plates will need <laughs> more plates more dates will let you know everything Schultz um, Connor Murphy's <laughs> divine protein shake enters the chat ah uh, fuck dude like how even this made it in here that's funny Shawls needs to see more plates, more dates. Sub guys, Derek, more plates, more dates. Com. Today, Meathead Chemist is going to review it, recommend a steroid protocol to Andrew Shoals. Um, yeah, so anyway, obviously, everyone is, uh, I'm all over the fucking place in this guy's comment section. So he says he wants to do steroids, which is an interesting uh, and heavily abused topic, in my opinion, in the comedian space at this point. It's literally like crying wolf, these motherfuckers. How many comedians have at this point have you heard make a joke like I'm gonna start steroids? I'm just gonna inject this shit tomorrow. I wanna take fucking TRT. You know how jacked I'm gonna get when I take TRT? I think it's Brian Callum who's made it the worst for everyone. Cause at this point, the guy has probably for about fucking five years straight been like, I'm gonna start TRT. Wait till you see how jacked I am. I'm just gonna start steroids, guys. Like, I'm gonna just take some fucking Anavar or some shit. It's like, dude, are you gonna fucking take it? You're gonna make a joke about it every goddamn podcast. So, I don't know if this guy's serious, but I mean, I've heard this joke enough times by these comedians to know that, or to assume that he may not actually be serious about it, but let's just give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'll give uh, my analysis on the, uh, I don't know, recommendations that are going to be made here. I'm not really sure exactly uh, what they're going to be getting into, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I want to still do steroids. Okay. Yep, same. So what what are we doing here? How yep, same. Like, okay, you sure you fucking do, bro. Why do we just do the safest amount of Safely. steroids? I don't understand why people won't do or that. Or everything else. Or we can peptides. jump out of a plane. Or peptide. peptide. Whatever they fucking peptides are. I'm going to call illegal. them all steroids. Talk about peptides. PED. I want to do PEDs. I, I just want the safe amount of PEDs. We can do tons of dangerous things in a safe way. We can jump out of planes in a safe way. Right? We can go skiing. We can drive cars in a safe way. There's all these different ways to do things safe. Right. I would like to do this in a very safe way. No. What is the little bit amount where I can do it? Uh, I can have vitamin C, all the five vitamin C in my pocket. Right. Unregulated. Unregulated vitamin C. Look at that. I mean, Blau. Tylenol. Blau. Oh, yeah. give me one. Give me one. You want one? I, yeah. well, I got to get my vax today, so I got to take these. Ah, oh, dang. I got to get my second vax. I'm allowed to take, I'm allowed to get vaccines, but I can't get right. peptides? Uh, not controlled by the government. What is not controlled by the government? Peptides. Why does the government not want us to be strong? Are they worried that we'll take over the fucking capital? Why don't they time? give the military steroids? Uh, I don't know if they do, but I know in certain circles they're looking the other way. Huh. But like, why shouldn't it, he's up? You gotta be. They sanctioned. should be giving them every single time. Yeah, like a chicken on a farm, just like. I mean, they gave it to Captain America. That shit worked out, right? That's yeah, that's fuck a good ass to be in the army. They're like, our no. captain, yo. juice, juice, juice. Put them on the juice. Right. Okay, yeah, so let's say good. no real talk. Let's stay on the subject here. Us, yes. peptides, safe amount. How we do this? No idea. Sure no way, well, because they that, that's, that's the fucking answer. He's like, no idea. I guess that's true because it's like how there is no defined protocol for a lot of these research chemicals. Like if you give somebody GHRP2, GHRP6, Ipamorelin, Tessamorelin, Hexarlin, like is there a defined way to do it? Like not necessarily because these, you know, drugs aren't necessarily approved for human use, at least. Some of the ones I mentioned are actually made by compounding pharmacies and are prescribed, but in general, like random shit like fucking Melanotan 2, you know, GHRPs, um, GHK Copper. Some of the shit is like, you know, well, GHK is actually prescribed by pharmacies too, but some of the shit is very, very speculative in terms of what is the minimum effective dose? What exactly is it doing? How effective is it at doing, you know, fill in the blank effect? Um, what's the risk to reward on it? That kind of shit is very uh, new age stuff with these peptides. And it's like, you can't really say for certain, like when he's asking, how do I do it completely safely? 
it would be impossible to answer that question, which presumably is why this guy is saying, I don't, I don't fucking know. You can't just give a concrete answer, be like, this is exactly what you should be doing with no fucking context. The guy doesn't say his goals. He doesn't say what he's trying to achieve. He doesn't say fucking anything. He's just like, give me peptide. You guys haven't been around long enough. On the podcast. Right now, I'm taking drugs. Uh, yeah, so peptides haven't been around Nothing long enough for me. to do it. What like do you mean around long enough to do it? I'm, like, today no, I'm going to get a fucking disease injected in my it shoulder. It's been around for one it, year. Right? Like, know enough how to dose it safely. <laughs> Just start with a little. Collagen peptides, like the stuff you get from Whole Foods and you yeah. mix it. Yeah, no. Nah, that's for talking. girls. That's, yeah. What does that girls do? do that? That's, what does that do? He's talking apples and fish. <laughs> Bro, I've been drinking it. He's been doing that shit for a minute. I've been drinking it. It makes my hair super strong and stretchy. Yeah, no. What about pre-workout and creatine? Hydrolyzed collagen supplements are good. You know, I have a... I use the Great Lakes Collagen myself, and um, as well as another brand that is escaping me at the moment. But yeah, obviously not comparable when you're having ingestion of a fucking literal food versus a peptide you inject to induce some sort of pharmacologic effect. What does that do? What about pre cum? Have you ever tried that? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of Yo, these should I say? That is pure test, right? That's there. pure testosterone. What if we just shoot it's ropes a... right into our mouth? Yeah. What if we shoot ropes? <laughs> we is to... that why gay dudes are so strong? Yes, it is. That's Holy why they're in shit. great shape. Gay yeah. guys are in great shape and so are sluts. Sluts are in great they're shape. They're taking oral well, and injecting right, steroids. Right, right in their ass. Right in their ass, right in their ass bro. Um, I think what was uh, one of the Connor Murphy videos, somebody in the top comments was like, why is Riley Reed not jacked as fuck? <laughs> Perfect segue comment for this uh, little tangent they're going on. They prescribe Dude, anabolic skip the whole gastro system. anti-wasting drugs. Dude, what the fuck is this guy like? I was almost wondering if he had like watched my shit for a second. <laughs> like he's actually taught. Hang on. Let me go watch that fucking clip again. Great They're taking shit. oral well, and injecting right, steroids. Right, steroid, right, 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 right in their ass, They prescribe dude. anabolic Skip the whole gastro system. Oh, he's talking about, okay, never mind. <laughs> I totally misinterpreted that part. Wasting drugs to AIDS patient. Wait, what was that about AIDS? <laughs> no, 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 it's just like, I'm not to like, I'm not talking about other people's cum. I'm talking we shoot it right up the air like a fucking Kim Kardashian paper magazine cover, right. and then we catch it right in our mouths. So it's whatever you do behind closed doors. It's your. I'll do it right now. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't give a flying fuck. Well, don't hog it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna take steroids right on the fucking camera, guys. Like I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking do it. Okay, okay. I'm gonna start TRT, guys. Well, yeah, I think to your point, that's probably a better, not a better conversation, but like that's a more readily available performance enhancing drug that works with minimal side effects. Yeah. What? Creatine has been around oh. for 30 years in research and that's like. But that shit don't make you chiseled. It just gets you kind of like bloated. It just fills your shit with water. Right? We don't want to look like Brad Pitt. We don't want to look like the strong man. We don't want to look like the guy chasing around. Yeah, but I don't think Brad pot. Pitt's, Brad Pitt's not banging gear though. Oh, oh get out of no, here. he's way too small. Brad Pitt's doing something. He Dude, Natty, you're not tangent. Just let's see, see what they think. Was doing some you shit that for Fight Club, bro. Yeah, yeah, but no, definitely not Fight. Did you see him at 160 pounds in Fight Club, bro? Club? That was geared. Once you know, upon a time, he was, 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 was built like Ben Uyeda, bro. Right. He was built like Ben Uyeda. Ben Uyeda is probably on a gear, dude. Oh man, <laughs> no, he's so, not. They're okay, on a gear. We talking about Ben Uyeda? No way. Bro, he's, he's on the gear. He's jacked. Dude, he's just thin. No, he's on the gear, dude. I saw him fucking shooting up gear, dude. That's all the fucking take out his needle and shot his fucking beer. He's like the Mitchell Report. He's naming names here. He's like Jose Canseco. He's he was on HGH, on man. Right. He's on HGH. Like He's, he was on an HGH peptide. peptide when I saw him, dude. Yeah. He was. And he was super aggro about it, dude. He was fucking <laughs> aggro. That guy does not seem like he's ever been aggravated. <laughs> you got, you <laughs> just wait and see. Just wait and see, all dude. Right. You heard it here first. It's the exclusive. So wait, you say take creatine, get some extra lifts out of your workout, and then- Creatine and caffeine. Mm, like, whoa, 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 whoa! What do you mean about caffeine? Some black so, and this is, I think, performance-enhancing uh, drugs. When we start to talk sports, the the how do we get sexy the quickest? The elephant in the room with performance-enhancing drugs, and this is, I think, inadvertently going to help probably more than any sort of okay. illegal illicit drug. The performance-enhancing drug that I think people need to start talking about in professional sports is Adderall. Is oh, that's five so bad. Is Concerta? Like, there's it's said in the N, in the NF or sorry, the Go. Major League Baseball. Oh, wow, fucking it. nice. Adderall. That's P. That laser focus. That's what I do. You played the angle off the screen. That was incredible. That's man. a nine, not a nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> what is come it? On, uh, he's oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, come on. What's wrong? <laughs> hey, if you have a therapeutic use exemption, for example, with uh, some of these stimulants and whatnot. Now, again, 
that's a bit of a touchy area in a lot of these leagues. It's not like it's that easy to obtain something like that. But yeah, obviously, you know, skill acquisition, attention, focus, you know, a lot of shit can be enhanced when you are banging stimulants, or at least certain ones. Some are more efficacious than others, and things like Adderall can be useful in an acute context for many people. Now, um, I don't know if that's what he's going to mention here, but I guess let's uh, get his insight on literal fucking amphetamines. Sure. No, what is it? A 7 Eleven? He's right only, here, dude. 7 10, 7 10. 7 10 split. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, that was a 7 10 split. But yeah, so I think yeah. in professional sports, the thing that people aren't talking about is that. And Adderall being a. Well, I mean, it's a performance enhancing drug, but it's cognitive. Oh, it's right? so great. I love it. It's, I mean, now you want to talk long term side effects. I mean, you are just taking. Dude, I, took the Adder I took Adderall the other day and fought with my girl, dude. We had like a long argument and I knew it and she got destroyed, bro. <laughs> oh, I, can't I was so it's locked in and focused. She's trying to come yeah. up for her little arguments and my brain is working a thousand miles per hour, dude. It was like a beautiful mind. I was seeing little fucking algorithms <laughs> and shit pop up in the size. It was like, oh, body slam over and over again. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah. It's, it's, well, I mean, so there's the, in Major League Baseball, it's said to be the three A's alcohol, Ambien, and Adderall. That's Ambien gets you night night. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. you need to go night when you're taking meth. I gave her some of that the next time we were gonna fight, and then that was the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, you, he's, he's taking the Adderall. She takes the Ambien. Yeah, just it's, yelling dude, at her. Yeah. Like over, bro. Yeah. It's just over, dude. Yeah. But like that's that I think is where people aren't paying attention to, and yeah. this is almost becoming a sideshow. Like I think steroids now, like that steroid categorization of anabolic and androgenic. Yeah. That's kind of old hat. I think moving into the peptide route, insulin growth hormone, much more difficult to test for. And now the peptides, we don't really know what they are. Not necessarily we don't know what they are, but they're so new that we don't know what to do with them. Mm. And then I think the frontier further more to that is, is looking more to like the nootropic route, which is like a very generalized, like nutraceutical whole foods term. Like the Okay, yeah, so mentioning the bioidenticals like insulin as well as growth hormone obviously can be quite difficult to test for. Using things like H HGH, isoform differential amino acid, you only have a window of um, like a fucking, like less than a day, you know? It's not very useful for picking up people through randomized testing. And in addition, I do not even think it is um, that practical in terms of catching anybody, to be honest. Like if I was to chase fucking hgh positive test results i'd be implementing something like an igf1 biomarker test why that isn't in the picture yet i don't fucking know you know is it resources is it just not actually caring is i don't know do they want to make it seem like they're trying and they're not it was a legitimate test that was implemented at one point and then it was since um removed interestingly enough quite a while ago but it's pretty fucking obvious if a guy's taking hgh his igf1 subsequent to that is going to be elevated for a much longer duration of time then your isoform differential amino assay is going to pick up in randomized testing. So, um, and all, obviously insulin too, very hard to detect. Things like IGF-1, any bioidenticals, blood transfusions, like your literal blood being fucking infused back into yourself. Um, erythropoietin, fucking shit, <laughs> like literal actual testosterone. Like this is stuff that is being leveraged in professional sports right now. And the testing is not able to keep up with it necessarily in those who are, I don't know, up to snuff in terms of understanding how the bioidenticals testing even works. Because again, the assays that are using, the red flag detection methods that you're using to kind of set off alarms to do subsequent more highly specific tests, and even the highly specific tests, by the way, are not you know capable of catching everyone, they're just too lenient, you know? Now again, they're like, they're strict enough to catch the majority of people who don't have the resources and or knowledge basis in their corner to kind of get around this shit. But once you actually understand how these tests work, you start to see pretty easily, like, wow, this has a lot of fucking holes in it still. And it's giving the illusion of comprehensive testing and literally like bulletproof, um, basically being impossible to get around. But in reality, a lot of this shit is... You could literally be on the thing they're testing for and not be picked up based on the fact that they're not actually able to differentiate between synthetic and endogenously produced in some aspects. If you actually, you know, for example, have a, you know, pharmacology guy in your corner, which a lot of these pro athletes presumably do. So anyways, and then he's mentioning the, uh, you know, the nootropics, you know, definitely a huge part of uh, 
Um, skill acquisition, motor learning, shit like that in certain sports is absolutely critical and is um, definitely being used pretty significantly by a lot of athletes. And a lot of them are not banned by WADA, fortunately, for the athletes. And some of them can be very, very useful. Um, they're not, you know, as aggressive in the, you know, blatant performance enhancing context that so you don't see a giant, you know, 15 pound gain in muscle or something, but it is the neurological processes that are going to be upregulated and allow you to, you know, show that in the ring or in the, you know, whatever it is, the, uh, whatever medium of whatever your fucking sport is essentially. And yeah, the stimulants can play into that too. A lot of stimulants are on the band list though, to the point where if you don't have a therapeutic use exemption, like, I don't know what you think you could really get away with above and beyond like caffeine, certain analogs of shit. Like there are some stimulants that aren't banned, but the majority of like heavy hitters are on the prohibited list. So in that aspect though, like there is a lot of stuff you can get away with still, but most of it that is highly useful in my opinion falls into the bioidenticals and or compounds that simply aren't, that they're not really even aware of yet. You know, obviously there's designer like Frankenstein compounds as I call them and whatnot, which I've discussed previously in elaborate detail about you know synthetic anabolic agents that have essentially been revived from pharmaceutical archives and or tweaked and modified from existing molecules with unpredictable activity but used because it is something that is undetectable by WADA stuff like that but in general the main go-to's are going to be the bioidenticals these are very harsh drugs they're, mm -hmm. they're stimulants essentially like they're literally if you go to prescription in Canada for Adderall it says on the capsule m amphetamine so like that's what right. it's a direct I mean this is where I'm really stretching on my understanding of this. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does not. It literally says Adderall 10 milligrams or Adderall 20 milligrams or Adderall, whatever the fucking variant is. It does not say is he like implying it says methamphetamine on the fucking capsule? Let me listen to that again. Nutraceutical whole foods term. Like these are very harsh drugs. Like mm -hmm. they're stimulants essentially. Like they're literally if you go to prescription in Canada for Adderall. It says on the capsule M amphetamine. I shall just show you, I'll bring it up. So this is straight up from uh, the Sun Life app. This is what Adderall 10 milligrams is. This is Adderall 20 milligrams. This is Adderall 30 milligrams. And there is no instant release in Canada. So those are the, obviously there's other milligram variants, but in general, like that's what Adderall looks like. You know, the five milligram, the 15, like those are going to have different colors, but the shit says Adderall XR on it. So I'm not really sure. What he's talking about here. It's like, that's what right. it, it's a derivative. I mean, this is where I'm really stretching on my understanding of this stuff, but it is a derivative or very similar to what meth. we would know as meth. Right. It's good meth. But how are those white people so unproductive? The meth heads. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and whatever that, that switch in that compound is that takes you from Adderall to like smoking it's, out a light it's bulb. It's like, It's like Hodgkins. It's, it's a good like, Hodgkins. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I think the performance. Small molecular changes can make massive differences on a drug's pharmacologic effect. So saying that just because something has almost the same chemical name doesn't mean it's close whatsoever. Comparing meth to Adderall, like it's like it's not really a, a fair comparison in my opinion at all. So anyway, like it sounds like this is out of his wheelhouse anyway. So when he's talking about this, so I don't really blame him i guess but it's like even when it comes to fucking steroids it's like you know testosterone versus fill in the blank other compound there could be like literally one tiny fucking thing switched and the entire effects all of these satellite interactions are way different it interacts with different receptors has satellite interaction with other things that you are not expecting causes massive amounts of water retention causes massive amounts of aggression does you know a billion fucking things that might be different than another compound that is literally even EQ versus Dianabol, literal boldenone injected into your goddamn ass versus orally administered Dianabol, on paper, it's like essentially the same fucking drug, but the actual pharmacologic effects are drastically different in practical application. So just because something sounds the same, doesn't mean they're even close. It's enhancing world isn't looking, and that's where I think a lot of the benefit is coming from. Like if I got a hit home runs and this guy is, Randy Johnson's six foot nine, he's throwing 104. How did we get from talking about safely doing steroids for Andrew Schultz to talking about drugs and sports? 60 feet away. By the time that ball leaves his arm, I got 0.2 hundredths of a second to fucking. So that extra focus is huge. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Absolutely. That's limitless, bro. That's, yeah, you're I've literally heard, Bradley Cooper. I've but, heard uh, Adderall feels like the limitless drug. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, no, not even, have not you not never tried Adderall? Never tried Adderall. Yeah. No, I would love oh it too much. God. I, I, I would, would do it once it. a month and then to the point it's like, this can't be good for me long. But I get angry on Adderall. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I see. I just. Agro. He gets androgenic. Agro. I get androgenic. It's androgenic? Yeah. yeah. I get yeah. androgenic. His balls shrink up and he gets. It's not androgenic at all. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's unreasonable, bro. Yeah. <laughs> my balls don't shrink up, actually. Really? Yeah. I was looking at my balls. They get bloated? No, but like. <laughs> No, it's just regular balls. But my sexual <laughs> appetite is not very high. Well, your on actual Adderall. appetite is known to go down. You that also, I have to like remind myself to yeah, eat. Set timers. I would do that. Yeah, I was taking Adderall to get some work done or something. Yeah, you get dude. fucking shredded. Yeah. That's well, yeah, right. but then you're headed down the mat. Then just take mat to get shredded. Yeah, right. but then your teeth fall out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But just give me the Adderall of HGH. Give me the Adderall of testosterone. Give me the Adderall. Give me the safe version of it. That's it. That's that's them. Oh, so they're good. I'm it only all gets that. more. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? It only gets about? more dangerous from there. And anyway, we start trying to tweak bioidenticals to be like more, I don't know, precursors of shit or, I don't know, a methylated version of it. Like you get to the point where the actual bioidenticals are what your body already relies on physiologically to function. So that's it, dude. Like you said, you know, testosterone is the best thing you could be doing if you were to replace your hormone production and shut yourself down. Like obviously replacing it with. Testosterone is going to be the best tolerated thing, probably. HGH, you know, why would you use some other weird compound? Like, I get there are certain contexts, again, where it makes sense. Like, for example, let's just say you're somebody who's trying to drive appetite. Maybe you use a ghrelin receptor agonist that's also simultaneously spiking your GH and IGF-1. But if you're somebody who's just trying to increase your GH and IGF-1 and you don't have other goals and or, you know, you like some people don't even want to inject they might need something orally active because they refuse to inject like there's different scenarios in which this question becomes a little bit different but yeah for optimal like basically what's the safest thing the thing that's most predictable with the best safety and efficacy outcomes that we see clinically yeah bioidentical like test gh shit like that yeah i right, like testosterone is kind of like this very blanket cnn term like yeah. afternoon special ben affleck kind of raging out it's like there are Dude, Ben Affleck raging out. That's funny. That uh, if you haven't seen my reaction to that, I'll put a card up in the corner to Ben Affleck on what was it? Diana Ball, Winstrol. I don't know what else it was, but it was, it was actually fairly entertaining. There are so many more designers. Like if, if you just look at any banned substance list, right? That's a good place to start. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna see like so many chemical compound names that you've never seen before. Yeah, so it's like the the lay person who doesn't necessarily have to worry about. And this is something that when you deal with professional athletes, it's like, hey, this supplement company is sending me this pre workout, and it's like you got to get real familiar with a lot of chemical names because there could be something in there that's on the label, or more often the case, not on the label. It's like, you know, you want to make sure that your players are protected. And yeah. That they can't just be haphazardly going into taking anything because it's like, there, it's not just testosterone. It's not like the, we're coming for your testosterone test. Like they're mm. working on the but can stuff. They, like it's the cure for cancer. Can so. they test, uh, can they test for Adderall? Um, I don't know. I don't, Cause I don't know the half-life of it. As mm -hmm. I know, like there's like short release or extended uh, release true. versus not. Yeah, they can for sure. But I don't know if there's any sort of like metabolite or fat storage property to it that would leave it in your system for longer. Right. Um, it'd be interesting. And, it, and here's the thing. At the end I of the day. I think someone got pops and then they said that they were taking Adderall. So like the Adderall had something else in it or the Adderall elicited some other reaction that they got popped for. And they were like, no, I take Adderall. That's what it is. Or maybe it was a, a, a boner pill. Uh, Wasn't yeah. it a boxer that got popped and was like, no. Was it Canelo? Something you know, I, I do test? remember this happening. Canelo, and no, they said it was bad meat or something uh, like that. Oh uh, yeah, the love, bad meat yeah, thing is hilarious. No, like you're not thing. looking at the absolute best meat for the the mm -hmm. guy who's worth three hundred million dollars. Yeah. If they every time an athlete gets popped, they're dead to rights. And, but they still they go down swing. Go down swinging, bro. That's your worst. Rep. You got it. Worst it wasn't me. Excuses. The guy was like, "Yo, it was horse meat." The other guy at the Olympics was saying, "Like, oh no, I drank like eight beers and like had an orgy with like seven broads like the night before." It's like, nice. no, you didn't. But yeah, that's why my testosterone was so high. I was laying pipe all night. It's like, <laughs> no, it's like the, there's nothing better than a really bad drug pop excuse. So anyway, I did the video on Canelo actually reacting to Joe Rogan's speculation on if he's natty or not from the whole uh, tainted meat incident. One thing I have not done though is the Tyson Fury tainted meat Nandrolone debacle, which is on my to-do list. Let me know in the comments down below if you still want me to do that one. 
Um, I will prioritize it if there's enough demand for it. It is going to be giving my speculation on if he was indeed intentionally using Nadrolone or you know, basically doing a natty or not on Tyson Fury. Honestly, this was a bit of a disappointing video. I thought he was gonna go into what uh, Andrew Schull should be doing, but at the end of the day, all we really got was, like I guess he said, test and HGH is good. And that was like a one sentence answer to this whole video. But I mean, no real specifics, no kind of uh, explanation of how to do it safely, no outline of ancillaries to use on cycle to you know manage your lipids or attenuate angiotensin um receptor agonism and shit like that they basically just talked about performance enhancing drugs in sport and um yeah that was basically it kind of an interesting uh i don't know anyways hopefully you guys hopefully you guys enjoyed that you know i wasn't uh as i was going through it i was like damn this thing's like almost done we have yet to talk about like what he's gonna use and it turns out we're not so anyways that is uh my reaction and analysis and commentary based on what they were talking about though and hopefully you guys enjoyed that maybe learn something like subscribe check out my blog moreplacemoredates.com follow me on instagram at moreplacemoredates facebook snapchat bitch you twitter tiktok couple podcasts if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below my trt clinic it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home gorilla mind nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas designed myself from scratch, my recommended lab tests and diagnostics, stay on top of your health during TRT and or just if you're natural as well, or if you are an enhanced athlete and you're going to be using fucking steroids like Andrew Schultz, then you should be staying on top of your health by assessing your biomarkers before, mid-cycle exposure, post, etc. And uh, anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.